In the previous movie, we exported three sets of images of our player character using Maya LT and packaged them into a sprite sheet. In this movie, we'll integrate that sprite sheet into a Unity game. For this tutorial, it's important that you use version 4.3 or higher to ensure you have access to all the same tools. We provided a starting point for you in the scene files included in the link below. To open them, go to File, Open Project. Navigate to the directory you downloaded the assets to and select Zombie Game. This sets the current project. Next, go to File, Open Scene. Open the zombiegame.unity file to load the main game. This game consists of a simple graveyard environment along with basic world and player objects. Go to Play Mode to preview the game. You'll notice that you can control the main character with the arrow keys, although there's currently no visual representation of him. To add our sprite sheet, let's first create a new folder in the materials directory by right clicking it and selecting Create Folder. Rename the new folder Sprite Sheets. Now drag the sprite sheet you created in the previous movie into it. This automatically copies the .png file into the corresponding directory in your project folder. Remember that our sprite sheet is 2048 by 4096 pixels, so we'll increase the max size in the inspector to avoid any unsightly scaling. Next, we'll set texture type to sprite. Our image file represents an entire library of animation sprites, rather than a single sprite, so we'll need to set sprite mode to multiple. Unity then gives us the ability to specify the boundaries of each individual sprite via the sprite editor. We could manually select each sprite one by one, but that process would be tedious and imprecise. Instead, we'll slice up the sprite sheet automatically using the Slice tool. Set type to grid, then specify that the pixel size of each sprite is 256 by 256. Click the Slice button. Unity draws boundaries around each sprite, just as we specified. Now click Apply. In the project view, notice you can now expand stand animation sprites to display each of its sliced subsprites. We're ready to add them to the game world. To create a new animation, select all the frames that make up that animation and drag them into the hierarchy. So select animation sprites 0 to 23, which represents our character's run backwards sequence, and drag them into the hierarchy. Unity will prompt you to create a new anim file automatically. Rather than storing it here in the Materials Sprite Sheets folder, let's go to the Resources directory and create a new Animations folder to store all our animations. Rename this one StanRunBack.Anim. Now do the same for frames 24 to 47, the forward facing animation, and 48 to 71 the side-facing animation. If you go to the Animations folder in your project view, you'll notice Unity has created two files per animation. One is the actual animation file, which references the frames of animation in the Materials folder. The other is the Animator Controller, which determines when each animation plays. If we return the new game objects to the origin, and then preview the game, you'll see all three animations now exist simultaneously. However, rather than three different game objects, each with its own animation controller, what we actually want is just one controller that switches between each of these animations appropriately. To that effect, go back to the scene view and delete the extra game objects in the hierarchy. Also delete two of the controllers since we only want one. Rename the remaining one Stan Anim Controller. Double click it to open the Animator View, a node based state machine that you can use to set up conditions for when various animations will play. 
Right now, there's only one state that specifies that the stand run back animation will be played at all times. Let's add a new state by right clicking and selecting Create State Empty. Rename this state Stand Run Left. To associate it with the side running animation, simply drag Stand Run Side from the Project view into the Motion property field. Repeat this to create states for the remaining two directions. Now that our controller knows this animation has four possible states, we need to transition between them. Right click the Stand Run Back state and select Make Transition. Unity connects a line to the cursor indicating where the transition will go. Click the Stand Run Left state. We've now indicated it is possible to go from the Run Back animation to the Run Left animation. Create transitions like this one from each state to every other state. The controller now has the means to switch from any run state to any other run state. It just needs a signal. To give this signal, we'll need a new animation parameter, which you can add by clicking the plus button on the parameters widget. We'll create a new integer parameter, or int, named direction. We're going to assign direction a value from 0 to 3, depending on what direction our character is moving. We'll leave the default value as 0, meaning Stan will always start in the run back animation. To indicate when to switch animations, select the transition from Stan run back to Stan run left. In the conditions field, change exit time to direction, and then set the value field to 1. Going the opposite way, we'll want to switch when the direction parameter changes to zero. Repeat this for the rest of the transitions, staying consistent with which direction corresponds to which direction value. Now that we have a single controller that knows how to switch between animations, we just need to associate it with our player object, which will be sending its signals. Return to the scene view. Then select the player object in the hierarchy and click the Add Component button. The first component we need is a sprite renderer to actually display the sprites in the same place as the object. Drag the Stan Animation Sprites file from the Sprite Sheets folder into the Sprite property field. Stan appears on screen. Next, we need to add an animator component. Drag the Stan Anim Controller object you just created into the Controller property field. Preview your game. You'll see that the player object is now represented by a running sprite. However, if you change directions, you'll notice that the sprite isn't transitioning between animations yet. This is because we're not yet changing the direction parameter value. We can do that by editing the player's existing player move script. Double click it in the script property field. Unity opens the script in MonoDevelop. This simple script keeps track of the player's current direction in the x and z axes and changes them appropriately when an arrow key is pressed. Otherwise, it keeps the player moving on his current trajectory. In order to signal the right animation to play, we just need to set the animator component's direction parameter appropriately whenever one of these keys is pressed. First, create a new animator object named Anim. When the player is first created, we'll set this object to the player object's animator component by using the getComponent method. To change the direction parameter on each key press, we can use the setInteger method. For example, when the up arrow is pressed, we'll use setInteger to set the direction parameter value to 0. Repeat this for the other directions. Once you're finished, save the file and preview your game again.
the player sprite now updates based on the direction he's running. Notice that the animation seems a little choppy and slow though. In the Animations folder, select any of the Anim files. The inspector lists the animation's length property at 2 seconds and running at 12 FPS. But remember that in the previous movie, we'd originally created a 24 frame animation meant to run in 1 second. So in essence, this is actually only half the speed we designed our animation for. To fix this, select the player object and open the animation view. From here, you can see all the animations associated with a game object. Notice that, like the controller, this animation is being sampled at 12 FPS. Change the sample value to 24. Do the same for the other animations, then preview the game again. The animation runs more smoothly. Since it's a little dull to have a single character running around an empty environment, you can repeat the entire procedure to create a zombie animation and controller using the additional Maya LT produced sprite sheet we've provided in the scene files. When you're done, just add them to the pre made zombie prefab asset in the prefabs folder. You can then drag and drop one or more spawn point prefabs into your game world to spawn the zombies at random intervals. From here, you can create additional sprites for fire, smoke, additional characters, or anything else you like.